yes, I do have an opinion on what seems to be a major discussion about the calling out of Michael Robo by the writer of God's General. It happens that some clips of Michael Robo telling stories were shared on Pure Sound Media. And interestingly, the writer of God's General came to the comment section and made some remarks. In his remarks, he told, he importantly asked Michael Robo to stop telling untrue stories, but rather, should focus on preaching the gospel. Now, obviously, some YouTubers have also made their remark, and as always, they came out hard with their whip on the person of Michael Robo. Make a remark why ministers should stop telling stories, but rather focus on preaching Christ and Him crucified. Now, since they have decided to make references from the scripture, I am also here to bring what might you might consider somewhat balanced on the reason why ministers should in fact as a matter of fact keep on telling stories when needed and also when necessary but before we go into that uh, i wanted to see the video that makes run then when we come back i'm going to give my remark let's see when kenneth Hagin died they couldn't touch his body the glory that carried him to heaven the residue that was on the body nobody could touch him they had to invite his friends to gather around him to pray for a while to absorb the glory before ordinary men could carry Kenneth Hagin. You touch him, you go down. Touch him, you go down. They couldn't attend to the body. They had to bring men that have rank in the spirit who can interact with glory to surround him in prayer to be able to absorb what came. A man has finished his assignment. Over 80, died after serving God for more than 70 years. There was still deposit of power that they couldn't carry his body. Something is wrong with our generation. No? Something is wrong. We need to wake up. We celebrate nothing. We are too excited. Yes. Quite interesting, right? You know, sometimes these media guys can actually give you up, you know? Because I'm trying to wonder what would have attracted the attention of God's general. Okay, looking at the the caption that the pure sign can use, he said, untold mystery of Kenneth Hagin. So I'm just thinking like, okay, this um, writer of God's genera obviously researched a lot of um, so-called God's genera, and he has been able to compile most of his research into a book. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to imagine him seeing this kind of caption, the untold mystery of, of Kenneth Hagin, so he will like want to find out what is this untold mystery that I don't know about, only for him to have seen this story. And of course, he went to the comment section and said, This is not true. Looking at the story that Michael Rupo told, I mean, we don't even need to verify this kind of story to know, obviously, maybe perhaps this was exaggerated, okay? Because I, I'm trying to understand why would he want to tell this story. I've tried to look for the full video, which I have not seen, right? Because what I would want to say for those who claim that um, all this message is centered towards sin, I don't really think that might be true because you can't just use one clip to totally judge. You need to sit down to listen to the full message, which is what I try to get to even understand what where is emphasis. Why did they have to tell those stories? All right, but let's see the other video. All right, I was going through the chronicles of Catherine Kuma, and I saw something that shook me when Catherine Kuma organizes her crusades. They bring doctors and they bring news agencies to come and prove that the miracles were fake, they are not coming to worship God. When somebody claims he's sick, they do a test before the meeting. And when the person claims he's healed, they do another test. So every testimony she brings to the altar, if she tries it, they will take it to the doctor to prove. They wanted to show that this woman was a liar. But there was something she knew. Those who were close to her said, before she goes for a meeting, she will pray in tongues for 18 hours. She will pace the floor, moving without sitting, 18 hours. If she's able to complete that cycle of 18 hours, 
the glory will fall on her. And if that thing rests on her, it's over. If she goes into that meeting, if you like 1,000 of you to come, God will touch people. A point came, she now decided to organize a meeting for only cripples. Since you people think what we are doing here is picking people at random. And you'll find people like that in all generations. Both men and women. You speak of Catherine Kuman, you speak of Ami Semper McPherson, you speak of Maria Woodward Etta, and they are like that. So, interestingly, Robert also came to the comment section of this video and he made a remark. Now, first of all, you have to discover this is his official handle, handle page that he used in making this remark. And what did he say? He said, please stop telling stories wrong right now. The approach he used here by saying, please stop telling stories wrong, it's he might, want me, he might want to make me think perhaps maybe there might be some element of truth in what Oropo was sharing for him to have said please stop telling stories wrong so probably these stories might be true only that they were told wrongly all right and i think it actually makes sense the kind of comment he put up here and he went ahead to say it sounds like you are not well read or you just make it it is dishonoring to these generals of God. It will cause people to not trust, believe anything you say, teach the Bible, and leave the stories to the people who have the facts. All right. So, you know, when I get to hear this, when I saw this video, I I, I began to ask myself a question: Why would Michael Robo tell this part of telling the story? Why would he want to make up the story? You know, my conclusion is that probably there might be some element of truth in what he told. Perhaps he brought in a lot of exaggerations, which obviously misrepresented the facts. Or maybe perhaps he might even have heard this from a minister or, heard it, or read it from a book somewhere. Okay, nonetheless, uh, I think it is better to admonish people that they should stop telling unverified stories and just focus on teaching the Bible than asking them outrightly to stop telling stories. You know? Just the way I've seen some YouTubers come to do in their videos about this this um, this discussion, I saw someone even trying to drag some of these known apostles into this issue, claiming that they 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 all give into sensualization, you know, trying to get people to believe them or try to get people to pray and all of that. And all those things does not last. But come on, if you're asking people to stop telling stories, it means you are obviously telling them to discard. All of the numerous stories we've seen in the Bible that we are inspiring. So if you are of the notion that people should stop telling stories and they should just focus on teaching the Bible, come on. What do you make of the stories we've heard in the Bible about the prophet that had to pray seven times? And on the seventh time, God brought down rain in the midst of the drought, the drought season. How do you read with the story of a prophet that called a white beast? to consume children that we are laughing at him because of his bad hair or the story of the prophet that called on fire to consume i mean lithium fire to consume the altar of Baal. there are so many stories later than in the scripture that we are told for our learning so that we can know that the god we've come to serve and worship is a god who is able and endures in the supernatural one, one, one of the YouTuber which I respect very well, I've seen most of his videos, even went as far as saying that these people end up not teaching the, 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 these people. And by these people, he was referring to those apostles, Apostle Aromasai, uh, Apostle, Apostle Aromasai, Apostle Selman, and Apostle Michael Rupo, that they don't end up teaching their people sound doctrine. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Honestly, if you will need to scrutinize this man, don't just take their one day program, which you get to see online. Maybe someone invite them and you see some of their programs online. Maybe two hours that, that they were given for a program. I want to use it to judge them. If you need to scrutinize them, you also need to take due diligence. Look into what they are teaching. Go and see their messages and see truly if it's all about telling stories. Some of these guys have Bible college. And if you go to those Bible college, you will see that they take hours, I mean, man hours, getting to see their student labor in the scripture and in prayer 
and these are the people that you say that they deploy centralization in trying to get people to you know to believe or to get people to think that this is what you need to do about anointing about mantles and all of that and realms and portals okay the the middle place i have issue with some of the videos which i've got to see concerning this trend is the fact that people we are admonishing them to stop telling stories i understand the concern and the danger of you know wanting to tell um unverified story all right in order for me to close still on this issue of they should stop telling stories about men of god stop telling stories about adventures of fathers of faith and focus on teaching the bible i want to read the scripture and i want to know what you will make out of that scripture so reading from hebrews all right reading from hebrews chapter 11 from verse 31 now for my brother that was saying that they should stop telling stories of stories about great men of god and focus on just teaching the scripture hebrews as we know it gave account of the fathers of faith who through faith wrought many wonders now let me read this aspect which i love so much verse 31 it says by faith the allot Rea perished not with them that believe not when she had received the spies with peace and what shall i not say for the time would fail me to tell of gideon and of Balak, and of samson and of jephthah and of david also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions quenched the violent fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness we are made strong and what villains in fight turn to flight the armies of the aliens these are accounts of people exploits of people who want to consider fathers of faith and through faith they were able to accomplish these things in god so if you are coming to tell us to stop telling stories obviously you are telling us to discard the bible because the bible is filled with so many stories i think the question should be why are we telling these stories as a matter of fact if you ask me there is a need for us to tell verifiable stories especially when the holy spirit is prompting us to do so and the fact that someone tells stories about his exploit or about the exploit of men of god does not mean you are forcing people into um hero worship into what people consider hero worship okay because what do you exactly consider hero worship i mean if the essence of my teaching is just to make you believe in what i can do and not pointing them towards god then that is what you might consider hero worship i mean as we have seen in the case of people wanted to make their members believe that without their the anointing oil that they are selling your business cannot prosper those are hero worship or making people to believe without coming for a particular anointing service they will not excel in their body they will not excel in their health they will not excel in their academics those are hero worship i mean when you get to force people to believe that their wealth or their their success or their advancement in life is when they truly subscribe to one of the things which you provide and thereby making yourself the alpha and the omega not pointing people to god that is what we want to consider your worship no not when somebody is telling a genuine and sincere story in an attempt to let people see that these things we are teaching are things that are relatable things that we have seen happen 